into a brand new series today. It's going to take us four or five weeks to get through, but I think that you will enjoy it. And I, I think it'll uh, have an impact on your life. And uh, she said that it was uh, it's fresh faith. I'm so glad that we serve a God who is fresh, right? I mean, listen, what, what you read in, in God's Word today, you can turn around and read the same thing tomorrow and get something fresh out of it, right? I've read, I've read passages a hundred times. And, uh, and, and, and that one time that I, that I read it again, it spoke volumes to me. And I fly past through it time after time after time. And I love that because God knows right where I'm at. And He knows that there are times in my life I just need a fresh faith. And maybe you do too. Maybe you're at a point in your life where you're just like stuck in a rut. Maybe these last 10, 12 months have just gotten you into that place where you just have no energy. Uh, nothing seems to uh, be encouraging you anymore. Uh, maybe, you, maybe you found yourself... Uh, you've stopped reading God's Word. Maybe you've stopped uh, praying. Maybe you've stopped uh, getting into that secret place where you have been so many times and you've discovered, you know this, that God can bring about a fresh faith in your life. And so we're going to talk about that in the next several weeks. And, and basically what we're going to be doing is going through the book of Malachi. So uh, if you've never read Malachi, I would just uh, challenge you and encourage you to do that. It's very short. It'll take you... 20, 25 minutes uh, to make it through the whole thing, right? So I love books like that, <laughs> that, I can, that I can go through in one setting, but it's so powerful, and I think it'll change your life. I really do. I think it'll have a big impact in your life. But uh, maybe today you're just in that place where you've uh, experienced a season uh, of crushing, uh, whether it's a, a physical crushing or a Maybe financial, maybe emotional, uh, maybe the uh, the uh, just the events of, of what we've experienced with COVID, with the hurricanes, with the ice storm, with the election, with just everything that's been just been mounting on top of each other has just put you in a in a place of of being crushed, and you're ready to get out of that crushing, and you don't know how, and so we're going to uh, help you. We're going to share some things with you that are going to help you to get back to where you used to be in your relationship with God. And not just where you used to be, but even further yeah. in your walk with Him. And so I think you'll be blessed. But aren't you so glad that uh, spring is right around the corner? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody's favorite? Is that anybody's favorite season of life? Just spring? It's, it's, a, it's a good time, isn't it? When, when, when things start to, to bloom and you start to see the... The trees on the, the leaves on the trees, and you know those allergies kick in. Isn't that just a wonderful, sweet, blessed time of year? You know, when you walk around sniffling and sneezing, and it's good, isn't it? It's good. Well, I'm bringing up some good memories, aren't I? You're not going to want to talk about fresh anymore after this. But uh, it's just a good time. Good time when you see the flowers and bloom. It just, it just it, there's just something about it that uh, can really. Uh, kind of turn around those uh, those winter blues, if you will, that uh, that we experience every year. So, so my question is, what if what if your faith uh, could be fresh, like like the, like the springtime, like those springtime flowers, like the the springtime rains, and just bring a bring a newness to life. It can, it can. Your your faith could be. Just like that spring time freshness. Well, there's a story about a small industrial town that lost 100% of its electricity when a power plant uh, shut down. They didn't know what to do, so they called an electrician and he came out and he examined uh, the facility and, he, and he, couldn't, he couldn't find the problem. He couldn't fix it. And so what they ended up doing was calling this electrician who was in the, in, the, in the city, the metropolitan city, about an hour away. And so uh, an electrician came out and, and, and he began to, uh, to take his hammer and, and go around and, and he would tap. He, he would tap in one place and then he would go over and he would tap in another place and then another place. And he would do this for about an hour. He's just going around tapping. 
And after about an hour, he went back to the second place that he tapped. And when he got back to that second place, he, he reared back and he hit that with all the strength that he could muster up with that hammer. And the lights came back on. Well, he sent, about a week later, he sent a bill to the city for $100,000. Yeah, yeah. Well, the mayor wasn't too happy about that. So he uh, sent a letter back expressing his uh, frustration, disappointment. In, 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 in the amount of time that he used, the amount of effort that he put in, uh, he, he didn't feel like that measured up to the, to the price of the bill. And so uh, he let the electrician know it. And the electrician just simply responded with, with an itemized... Uh, bill and it said five dollars for the hammer and ninety nine thousand nine hundred and ninety five dollars for knowing where to strike with the hammer right right and so the key to having a fresh faith is knowing where to strike with the hammer Okay, and the problem is that so many of us go through our life and, and we're just like that, that electrician. You know, we're hitting over here, we're hitting over here, we're, we're hitting over here, hoping that, that this strike will work and, you know, this strike will work and maybe that one over there will work. And, and so we don't really know where we're supposed to strike. And so the, the, the purpose of this series is to give us the, uh, the, 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 everything that we need to be able to know where to strike. Because that makes all the difference in the world. That, that makes all the difference in whether or not the lights are going to come back on. Well, it's cool because God has given us the place to strike with the hammer. We've just missed it. Okay, we, we've just simply missed it. But through Malachi, he's going to point us to the key of where to strike. And so uh, I would just encourage you, try not to miss... So that when it's over with, you'll have the key of knowing where to strike. So today, we're going to start out at the end. Alright, so I kind of like to go to the end and kind of see what the end says before we go back to the beginning and make our way through. So, if you have your Bible, turn to Malachi. It's the last book of the Old Testament. So if you know where Matthew is, you can just go there one page to the left and you'll be right where you need to be. And we're going to look at the, uh, the last couple of verses in the book of Malachi, chapter 4. And it says, it says this. It says, Remember the instruction of, my, of Moses, my servant, the statutes and ordinances I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Look, he says, I'm going to send you the prophet Elijah before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with a curse. All right, so this is the last book of the Old Testament. This is the last verse of the last book of the Old Testament. Now, you may not know this, but these are the last words that God is going to say for 400 years. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine, here's God saying, and He will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with a curse and then go silent. Mm -hmm. Man, what if you were there? What if you were the one He was talking to? Mercy. Mercy. Say something else, God. Come on. Don't, don't end on a curse. Speak some more. But they go year after year after year after year. God says nothing. Makes you start wondering, what is God up to? And if you went back to the, uh, to the first uh, chapter of, of the book, and the first verse, he says, this is a message for all of Israel. For all of Israel. Now, we just sang that song about being redeemed. I am redeemed 
Well, guess what? If you're redeemed, you're a part of all of Israel in that first verse Amen. of that first chapter. Amen. Yeah. That's us. Yeah. Yeah. He's speaking to us. Yes, it is. And so, it would be wise of us to figure out how we can avoid a curse. We don't want to be a part of a curse. So I'll give you a little hint. So what's the opposite of a curse? Blessing. Blessing. Right? I would much rather be blessed, wouldn't you? I would much rather receive a blessing. And so what we're going to discover as we go through each and every chapter is how we can avoid the curse and receive the blessing. Because I'm pretty sure that's what all of us would rather have. That's what all of us would rather have. So, and what I know about God is that He would rather bless too. He's, he's a God that would prefer to bless His people. He would prefer to do that. He would rather bless us than curse us. So, we're going to find out how that is to happen. So, before we can kind of dive in to the book of Malachi, it would probably be wise for us to, uh, to recognize or to understand who we are as the redeemed mm -hmm. and what God's purpose is and what His plan is for us and, and through us. So, so, when we know that, we can kind of go through these chapters one by one and, and start to recognize what it is that we need as His redeemed to be able to know, you know, where to strike the hammer. How to receive that blessing. So, Genesis chapter 12, uh, verses 2 and 3, kind of tell us who we are. And it says this. God is, is, is speaking... Uh, it's the Abrahamic covenant. And, and here's what it says. He's, he's, he's talking to Abraham. He says, I'll make you into a great nation. I will bless you. He says, I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse. There's that word. I will curse those who treat you with contempt. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So I don't know about you, that is a pretty cool covenant that God has made with Abraham for all of the children of Israel, us included. Yes. I will bless you. And I will use you to bless others through you. So that is God's plan. And, and that right there ought to, ought to bring a freshness into your life. Think about this. What if you were to wake up tomorrow, God wants to bless others through you, and God wants to bless you. So what if you woke up tomorrow morning thinking, hey, I've got purpose today. There's a purpose in my life today. Amen. There's somebody at work that needs to be blessed, and I'm the one that's going to bless them. Amen. Because God has blessed me. Yes. And I'm going to go tomorrow, and I'm going to go to work, and I'm going to be a blessing to those around me, because that's what God wants to do. And guess what? If they curse me, God's going to curse them. So I've got nothing to lose. I've got nothing to worry about. So that right there ought to bring a little bit of freshness to your faith if you've been feeling a little bit down, a little bit discouraged about how can God use me? What can God do through me? Well, there's somebody in your life, in your world, that needs to be blessed through you. And that's what God's will is. So if you're taking notes, I've got three points here that I want you to, uh, to write down. Number one is this. That word blessing, it means empowerment to prosper. That's another good word, isn't it? Prosper. How many of us want to prosper? I, I, would, I want to prosper. And through the blessing that God wants to give to us, we are empowered to prosper. In fact, God will grant you the power to overcome every situation in your life. Every attack. Because He has mapped out where you should use your hammer. He's mapped it out. Now notice, uh, I used the word overcome. I, I didn't say the word avoid. 
All right, I, I can't tell you that you're going to avoid every attack. I can't tell you that you're going to avoid every difficult situation or difficult circumstance in your life. What I can tell you is that God will give you the power to overcome that situation Amen. and that attack Amen. on your life. Because He wants to bless you. So when you do exactly as He instructs, the result will be the blessing. And so that's what each and every one of these chapters are going to teach us. He's going to instruct us on how to receive the blessing. And that's what he wants to do. So that's number one. The word blessing means empowerment to prosper. God wants to empower you to prosper. Number two, the effect and outcome of the word blessing is the opposite of the word cursed. They're on two different sides of of the spectrum. Curse means everything that you do will fail. Everything that you do will fail. And ultimately, eternity will escape you. See, nothing cursed will enter heaven. And nothing cursed will prosper. Think about... Uh, since we're, since we're coming into spring, think about your garden or think about your, your, your vegetable garden or your, your flower uh, garden. Think about those things. You're, you're going to go out there, those of you that, that, uh, that plant flowers and, and grow crops, you're going you're to go out there and you're going to prepare uh, the, the flower bed or the, or the, uh, or the vegetable garden. You're going to go out there and you're going to till it up and you're going to get it all nice and ready. You're going to put some, maybe some fresh... Uh, soil uh, in in there, and you're gonna you're gonna try to uh, give you're gonna try to empower it to prosper. You're gonna try to bless your flower bed. You're gonna try to bless your vegetable garden because why? You you want to be able to enjoy the flowers that spring up. You want to be able to enjoy the the food that you're going to grow. Well, listen, if you if you did nothing, it's more or less uh, cursing uh, the ground. And you're going to get nothing. If you don't go out there and do something and, and work at it, then you're going to get nothing in return. Amen. And that's the, way, that's the way cursing works. If, 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 if something is cursed, it's doomed to fail. If something is cursed, then, then, it's, then, it's, then it's not going to produce what it was supposed to produce. And so... We have to recognize the difference. That there are different sides of the spectrum. We want to be on the blessed side of the spectrum. Number three is this. God's Word requires absolute obedience. So, so obedience is kind of like that fresh potting soil and that you know, work in the ground. It's, it's kind of that one ingredient that we need in our life to produce what it is that we're trying to produce. And so it's critical. God's Word requires absolute obedience. In fact, God, obedience to His Word results in the blessing for His people, for us, and for His church. Absolute obedience. You see, we say this all the time, God's love is unconditional, and it is. His love is absolutely unconditional. There's nothing we can do to separate us from the love of God. Amen. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And that is wonderful. Wonderful news. But His blessings are conditional. His blessings are conditional. We are not guaranteed to be blessed if we are not obedient. Amen. We are not guaranteed to be blessed if we are not obedient. Now the cool thing is, is uh, people who are blessed are attractive and they're easy to follow. And you know who they are. If you've been around a, a believer that uh, uh, is, an, is an obedient believer, you, you see how attractive they are to be around. And that's because God is blessing them in their life. And He wants to do the same thing in our life as well.
And so his plan is still to bless humanity, to bless the planet through his seed, Israel, which is us, you and me. We're part of that seed. Now this might encourage you just a little bit. Now, now Malachi was, was speaking to these people who were uh, having trouble. They, they were troubled in their circumstances. They were having financial insecurity. They were having religious skepticism. Uh, they, were having, they were experiencing personal disappointments. Uh, very similar to what you and I experience today. Uh, not much different going on in their life. And what he lays out in Malachi is the place where you and I are supposed to hit with our hammers. He lays out the key for us so that we can know where we are to strike with the hammer. So we don't go around in our life just trying to hit this and trying to hit that, trying this job over here, trying this, this, this city over here, trying this food over here, trying, trying this friendship over here. We don't have to go around doing that. We can know where we're supposed to strike with our hammer. And that's the plan that God wants to share to show us and to share with us. Because knowing where to strike makes all the difference in the world. You see, going around life and, and hitting just anything just to see if it'll work, Man, that's exhausting. And what's bound to happen is you're bound to, to get to that place where you're discouraged and you just want to give up. You're like, God, where are you? God, what are you doing? God, why are you letting me experience this? God, why am I, why am I not blessed? Because you, you don't know what the key is. You don't know where to strike with the, with the hammer. You don't know the $99,000 key. All right. And so we're going to talk about this in the next several weeks. But if you, if you, if you would think about that vegetable garden or that flower garden, you know, people will drive hours. People will drive hours to see beautiful flowers. They will. They'll take a whole day just to go and see beautiful flowers and take pictures and be around it because it's, it's beautiful, it's fresh, it's inviting. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. You know, when, when leaves start to fill those trees and the grass starts to turn green, and you know, it's, just, it's a blessing when the vegetable garden starts to grow those vegetables that you want it to. I, I've never known, I've never experienced that, I've never been able to, to grow anything. But for some of you, when those vegetables finally come in, it's a blessing to you. It's a blessing to your family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's the same for us. We can be a blessing to those around us. Mm -hmm. When we're going around in our life and we're striking the right places, doing the right things and being obedient to what God wants us to be mm -hmm. obedient to. So we're going to learn how to be blessed and we're going to learn how to be a blessing uh, to this world so that we don't have to experience the curse. <coughs> we don't have to experience the curse. I don't know about you, but I don't want to experience the curse. I want to experience the blessing. Amen. And so that's what we're going to talk about in the next several weeks. How do we experience the blessing? So I'm asking you to close your eyes, bow your heads.